Okay, I think we can start. Okay. So let's share my uh, screenshot then. Yeah. So can you see the screenshot about the, the book? Yeah, but it's uh, like your screen, it's, uh, it's like it's showing a double screen, stuff like this. Yeah, because I actually dividing the dividing the windows, so. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's fine, windows. Then. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, do that again. Hold on. So can you see the screenshot? Yeah. Okay. So can you read the text? No, it's too small. <laughs> it's too small? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. So in that case, maybe I can only share this one. So now you can see more yeah. clearly. Yeah. Now I can see the book fine. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna type start. Okay. So hello everyone. So today is the sec uh, second week of the this study club, and then I will cover the chapter two, like a Python language basics and I Python and Jupyter notebook. Uh, I'm not sure if you have any experience about the, some of the IDE editor for the Python, but chapter two actually covers the uh some uh some of the Python editor, especially for the Jupyter notebook, which is the one of the one of the commonly most commonly used Python editor. You can you know, you can uh install the Jupyter notebook automatically when you uh uh when you're downloading the anaconda so so this so okay so let's start and then uh okay hold on so this one is actually about the kind of like uh, how we how you can basically using the editor first because uh, before you conducting the any kind of a uh, coding for the data analysis you definitely need uh, some of the code editor so that you can code your data analysis code, right? <laughs> so, so these are the kind of a basic example of the. So one of the most important, one of the most. Sorry, if you, basic, if you yeah. sorry, if you say the editor, do you mean the 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 terminal or what? What I what do you mean by the editor? Uh, editor is uh, what I'm saying about the editor is like a IDE, mm. like a what like a integrated. Sort of like an interpreter, sort of like yeah, ID, yeah. Yeah, development editor. So, so like you said, it's basically about the about the not the inter not the terminal. It's a kind of a code editor, you know, like a R Studio. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the what I'm saying. Interpreter is actually Python is the interpreter. Like uh, when we coding the uh, when we coding the our code our Python code, we can learn the that Python or maybe R file by using the R or Python as an interpreter because uh, those program allows us to interpret the, our code based on the their grammar right, and then. What I'm saying here is the when I say about the IPython and Jupyter notebook is a kind of like a editor for the coding, like programming. Okay, so one of the very basic way you can actually do for the uh uh for the Python is the what is called the Python interpreter, as you can see here. Actually, uh, I think that 
uh, the author actually used the Mac for the this all of the these expand example looks like a like a, this one is actually like a Mac kind of a terminal. But like it's indicating like that a, it's, it's indicating Linux something like this. Yeah, something like that, or Mac, it's, like it's a Linux. Linux or Mac. Yeah, because yeah, it's a dollar sign. In front of the dollar sign actually represents about the, either Mac or maybe Linux, right? Like a Ubuntu or something. It's actually designed actually pretty similar about the window, window command prompt, right? Yeah, yeah. So actually, I use the Windows. So I'm going to try to explain this one based on the Windows, OK? So mm -hmm. uh, OK, let me see. Uh, I had to share another one. Well, the, OK, can you see the my command prompt? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. OK, this is a, this is a when you when you actually um, run the window window command prompt, you maybe have a, this kind of a screen, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you can, as you can see in the book, you when you say about, when you type the Python in here, you can automatically enter the Python language uh, coding console screen, okay? And then as you can see in the example, maybe when you say A equal five, and then when you say print, a, it actually automatically give you the five, right? Or maybe A go five, and then you can also use the uh, use the semicolon semicolon to 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 run the two different code like the B B is a six, and then C go A plus B, A plus B. I mean, and then when you say about the print. C, it should be 11, like this, okay? So mm -hmm. this is a just kind of a, like you said, in R, like it's a kind of a very learning the single line of the code. So this is a, what is called a Python console, and then a, this is a very basic example of the Python interpreter. Or maybe you can say about the, maybe always say hello world kind of things. And then you can see, the, this kind of a screen, okay? And then when you go out to the this one, you can click uh you can click exit and, and print with the with the parenthesis, or maybe control Z gonna be the gonna be the exit, okay? So mm. this one gonna be exit the exit the Python. This is a very basic, like uh if you just try to learn the one line at a time. That's the kind of things. Or maybe you can try to do the multiple line, maybe by using the semicolon or something. But this is, uh, anyway, this is the very basic, uh, basic example of the Python interpreter. So as you can see here. So that's the what we just did for the Python interpreter, okay? So it's the same thing for the, when you try to do the Python, uh, uh, Python uh, file, so whenever you have a Python uh Python file when you already prepare, you can also uh learn the that Python code like uh, using the Python and hello world file. It gives you the hello world. Maybe if that's the that's the code. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Like uh maybe when you uh maybe if you can install the Python correctly, you might have a Python IDLE shell in the in the Python. And then when you click the new file, and then you will you will see there is a, another another screen comes up like this, right? And then you can you can feel free to uh create the, your own code and then uh, you can save it save maybe save as and then you can maybe uh go to the go to the your maybe yeah, or, or anywhere, let's say the, the folder for like the a, for, for the book club maybe like if you already yeah, have or a maybe 
Yeah, maybe whatever you wherever you yeah. want to do in the folder, right? So yeah. you can just say uh, I would say about the about the Python for data science, or, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. oh you can you can you you cannot see the screenshot. Okay, hold on. No, I'm seeing it. I'm uh, seeing it. Oh okay. I'm seeing it. So so this is the save, and then we can save that one right here. Mm. And and also also when you go to the your Python uh prompt uh prompt in here and then uh, when you go to the desktop uh there is uh maybe I I hope that there might be the file in here maybe directory. Yeah, uh, Jack, uh, maybe I think that there is a, a file. I think if you want to open it from here, maybe you, you have to change the directory or? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, maybe in here. I think that, yeah, here, like a hello world pi is here, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you can, you can, you can go to the, go, you can, you can actually do like this, hello world pi that give you the, give you the outcome. Right. That's the how you can use whenever you have a file to learn the code. You can also learn the learn the Python code like this, like a Python uh, space and and your file name dot py that give you the give you the this kind of uh, things. Okay. Yeah. And also when you install the anacon uh, anaconda, okay. When you install the Anaconda, you might have a have a IPython program already installed in your window. Mm -hmm. So you can also also run the IPython, which is the very similar to the Jupyter Notebook, which will be we will be covered in the later section. So, like I said, in here, when you type about the ipy ipython uh maybe not here because ipython actually uh runs under the what is called the anaconda anaconda based kind of a prompt okay or maybe you maybe so, why not you exit exit and then try it again maybe because maybe you are in a different working directory or just tap exit and uh, then maybe i don't know uh no, no, that's not that way. Maybe even if we can, even if we try to do the same thing in here, I, I'm, I, okay, let's try. It. Maybe because I because I, I it, it, it works for me. Yeah. You know? Okay, cause maybe I think that I did not designate any kind of a path, a uh, path options. Cause oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that might be the that might be the one uh things that I have so. Maybe in my case, maybe it doesn't work that way. In my case, I can always go to the apps. And then uh, when you go to the Anaconda, you will mm. see the Anaconda prompt in here. Mm. And then let me share that one. So you, you can see that this Anaconda prompt. And then when you type the IPython in here, you can in go into learning to the IPython going to be executed. And then, uh, you remember we actually creating, uh, creating the one Python file in the previous, uh, in the previous right, right? So yeah, yeah. you when you try to learn the that one in the under the this IPython languages, you can do the learn hello world pi, and then you will see the result. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the how it works about the high Python or Hi, uh, Python interpreter or something. That's the what, uh, what this chapter is about. And then let's go down to the some of the IPython basics. So we now we actually learn the IPython. So learning the IPython set is the very very straightforward, cause uh, it is actually prompted by the line, like uh, in. In line a equal five, and then a gonna be give you the five like out, output, right? 
or maybe you can import the NumPy as an MP and then uh, you can actually designate the data, create the sum of the vector file, and then uh, you can actually creating the sum of the random number from the standard normal distribution functions. So it is actually kind of a, in, in, in R, it is like a R norm, like, uh, like this, this function. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, and then you also might be, when you're looking at the, this one, this is a very interesting to see because, uh, in, th in this case, the, the function actually come first and then a for loop is actually, actually follow, follow by the, that function after that, right? This is actually one, what is the unique about the Python? There is a lot of way you can do about the, this kind of, a, uh, how you can create in the full loop into the one single line or multiple line kind of things, okay? So, so this gonna be covered maybe later in the chapter in this book, but this is uh, just, you can just keep in mind about the, this is also another way you can create in the, when you have a full loop, okay? So, just kind of inside the for for uh just inside uh, uh block inside the whole for loop gonna be comes first and then a for loop by itself actually comes the second comes the uh, comes uh comes the next that is a very unique actually this one this one does not uh it, it is a very different from the maybe when we try to create a for loop in R. And also when you say when when we say about the range in seven, that actually means is the you can we can say about the zero to six. So it is actually zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Does not include seven. Okay. It only gives you about the zero to six as a kind of a number. And then that actually have a seven, seven digit creating, seven digit random number, random, uh, random number gonna be created uh, based on the standard normal distribution function, uh, function. So that's the actually this kind of a research. So maybe we can, we can type that one in the, our, our prompt. Uh, no, I mean Python prompt. So as you can see I Python. here. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, but sorry, it's for for my case, it's interesting because when I when I typed uh uh uh, uh oh no no sorry go on go on go on yeah yeah, yeah. so so oh, numpy no, 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 because, MP, yeah. because I when I I typed uh Jupyter notebook it took me to uh 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 an online but we have not reached that so don't worry go on please uh, okay yeah so we can import the numpy as an MP. MP is a kind of a, another kind of a, you can actually designating the uh, name when you try to use the use inside the code. MP is usually kind of an abbreviation of the NumPy we, we commonly use, but there is a, also maybe you can say about the, not the MP, you can also designate the other name like a num or something, okay? But usually people like to prefer to use the num MP like this. Maybe I will say in, in, in this case, I will say about the norm, okay? And then you can click the data and NUM and random standard normal, right? For I in range seven, right? Right? So, this is a created, and then when you uh, click the data, you will see the same. Because uh, what is the difference about the, my code and then uh, the code in the book? I actually renamed the NumPy as a num, right? It's the customizing. So, so I just wanted to tell you is, because usually, uh, uh, this is a MP is a rule, rule of thumb as a kind of a, we can actually abbreviate the NumPy as a MP, but this one can be actually customizable, okay? 
as you can see in my example, maybe you can say about the num or something, or maybe n n u m p or etc. So anyway, you can customize your name, but the the rule is that the when you customizing this kind of a name, you have to make sure that that name does not conflict with the basic function of the Python rank uh Python Python languages. Okay, that's the kind of a basic rule. So so it does not it should not be overlapped with the basic other functions you already imported or other things. Okay. Other than that, if, if you can meet that that standard, you can actually customize or customizing that uh the name. Okay. The MP is a kind of a just kind of a rule of thumb about the abbreviation of the of the word, uh, of the these kind of uh, uh packages. So maybe another example is that we actually import the pandas actually as a PD. Okay. So so it is just kind of a rule of thumb or just kind of a not not kind of a very hard rule to follow. But it is just kind of a rule of thumb about the pen that's gonna be PD and then a numpy as a uh MP and then a scipy as a SP, etc. kind of things. But still I want to say is the when you when you rename the these kind of functions in when you try to use this library inside the code, you can actually customize your that abbreviation of the packages, packaging name, okay? That's the what I want to tell you about here. Yeah. And also you can say about the maybe print the data or data or something. Okay. It's another way you can try to do. Cause uh in here I only only click the data, but you can also try to do the data. In this case, this one actually give you the kind of combo like a horizontal kind of a listing of the your variable. Okay. So that's the how 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 things things works. Any questions so far? Anything? No, it's clear. It's, it's clear. Thanks. Okay. All right. So now actually IPython is actually kind of a uh kind of a very basic projects that actually led to the developing the what is called the Jupyter Notebook, because uh, like I said at the beginning of the today's meeting, I told you that the uh, when you install the Anaconda in your computer, Jupyter Notebook gonna be automatically installed in your computer, because uh, Jupyter Notebook is the part of uh, part of the Anaconda, uh, part of the program in uh in the Anaconda. So you can actually use uh, whenever you install the Anaconda you will get the Jupyter Notebook automatically, automatically installed in your computer, okay? So, so now let's run the Jupyter Notebook. So it is very simple. It is very simple to learn, uh, learn the Jupyter Notebook, okay? Because uh, whenever you can, uh, uh, there is a screen and then uh, whenever you go to the windows, and then I'll go to the Anaconda or, or maybe Miniconda or something. There is a Jupyter Notebook in here. And then when you click that one, you will see this kind of a this kind of a screen. And then after that, you will uh you will get the this kind of a screenshot, like a web web browser, you can actually, uh, all automatic uh, web browser is automatically comes uh, pops up, and then uh, you will see the this kind of a screen as a Jupyter, because uh, Jupyter notebook is the web based Python code editor that allows yeah, you to oh, work on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was but, talking about this. I I just typed uh, yeah. when I typed uh, Jupyter notebook on on my console. On my terminal, uh -huh. so it, 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 it took me here. Uh -huh. So this was what I was talking about. Previously. Yeah, yeah. It is also the same thing because uh, in the command prompt prompt screen, yeah. you can also you can also uh learn the Jupyter notebook, and then when you type that one and enter, 
you will also see the same screenshot with the with the terminal. With yeah, the terminal. But, like my uh, case, it, it didn't show yeah. the 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 yeah yeah it showed yeah it showed the uh, like this yeah, stuff this. and then and then it took yeah. me to the web page automatically. Yeah. Yeah, the web page gonna be comes up. Yeah, yeah, the web page like, uh, web page gonna be comes up depending on the your default browsers. Maybe if you use the Chrome, maybe yeah, I, I, I it took me to to Safari because I used a uh, Mac, so it took me to the Safari. Uh, then it opened the the, the notebook on on Safari, automatically. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, depending on the your default browsers, notebook uh Jupyter notebook using the your default browsers mm -hmm. as a as a platform for the for the London London Jupyter notebook. So in my case, my my default browser is the Google Chrome. So Google Chrome browser automatically comes up and then a dead windows actually pops up. Okay? Like this. Yeah. 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 So yeah. And then and then you can see these are the main screenshot. It's a, a little bit different, but it's a pretty similar, like a, like like Jupyter notebook, okay. And then in here, so this is actually kind of a basic example about the, how you can learn the code. So how you can do the using the Jupyter notebook, which is like a, when you see the this kind of a screenshots. You can click the new, and then you will see that there is a Python 3 kind of option. This is actually creating the new file. And then when you click that one, another window pops up, and then you will see that this kind of screen for the entering entering the Jupyter, uh, Jupyter Notebook code editor, okay? And then, and then here is the your line of the code, like, uh, okay, as an example, we can also see the hello world. And then when you try to learn the code, I think that it might be a good time for us to check out the some of the keyboard shortcuts. So when you go to when you go to click help, there is a keyboard shortcut comes up in here. Can you see the keyboard shortcut? All of the these things? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so this is actually a shortcut for the how you can learn uh learn uh using the Jupyter more efficiently. Okay. So and also another thing that you can see is the edit edit keyboard shortcut. You can also editing the shortcuts, whether whatever you want, customizing the your shortcut key based on the all of the these functions. Or Maybe you can using the this keyboard shortcut and then uh when you try to run the cell, there is actually three options. Like uh, shift to enter is a run cell and then a select below, and then control enter is the selected cell, R to enter is a run cell and then insert below. So that means whenever you uh you have a uh, have uh, these kind of things, so when you click the when you uh press the shift to enter you will see the outcome and then another line gonna be added in the next line, okay? And then when you say about the data, it go one, two, three. Actually, this kind of a bracket, bracket is the how you can try to create the when you have a, some of the vectorized the data set, okay? So when you shift enter, it also, um, comes uh, also store to the those data and then when you when you type the data and shift enter you will see the outcome like this okay so shift enter is the one of the simplest way you can learn the code by line okay and then another thing that I also wanted to wanted to talk about is the what is the good about the Jupyter notebook is you will actually using the some of the markdown markdown language document look like a, more like a markdown documents okay so how you can do that so when when you see like here in the in the line it's a it's a code editor in here right this is actually kind of a 
when you say about the, this, actually this line is actually prepare for the code, Python code. But when you go to the markdown in here, you will see the line uh, prompt is the disappear. And then you can actually type about the Python for data analysis like this, like a, like a markdown languages. Oh, okay. Like, uh, like this, like a subheadings, headings. And then maybe I would say about the old Python is on interpreted language like this. And then when you also say thing, when you try to press the shift enter, you will see that this kind of a markdown kind of a screen. Maybe I think that I should have a and cross like this, like a bold one, and then headings. And then you can feel free to edit anytime when you go up to up, uh, go up to the that uh that cell like this, double click it. You can feel free to edit editing it. Okay. But another way you can do for the this one is that there is actually shortcut. How you can uh uh try to uh, try to transfer from the code mode to the markdown mode is when you uh, press the e, uh, escape key, like an ESC key, you will see the this line cell gonna be turns the blue from the green to blue. And after, uh, after that, when you press, press the key M, you will see that there is a markdown mode gonna be comes up. Right, or maybe you can going back to the code mode. You can also the same thing. Press escape or press ESC key, and then when you type the key keyboard key Y, it it turn it automatically return back to the code mode. Okay, so that's actually very useful function about the how you can, uh turning to the markdown and then uh, code mode automatically. Because uh, when you try to do the Jupyter notebook, maybe when you have a very long documents, you rather than the uh, using the uh, using the kind of a comment inside the code, sometimes you can just kind of uh, typing the typing the your rec your writing in uh, like a like a markdown language using the markdown languages actually Jupyter notebook support uh, this kind of a markdown grammar so you can actually be making the your your Python code like a one single document for your data analysis okay that's the what is the good about the Jupyter notebook okay it does not explain clearly in here. But this one is a very useful function for that. Maybe another thing that I wanted to show you is maybe inside the markdown mode, when you try to try to type in the this negative sign three times and then press enter, you will see that there is an actually line gonna be comes up. Very, very, very gray, cool gray, uh dimmed line gonna be comes up, like a Typing, typing the these three, this negative sign like a like a minus sign, minus key, three times, and then shift to enter give you the whole line to the break, to the to the markdown some of the writing sections. Oh, that's okay. cool. <laughs> yeah, so so it is very helpful kind kind of functions. Okay, so. That's the another thing that I want to share because uh, in 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 here it does not clearly explain about the, these things, okay. And then also another thing that I wanted to show you here is uh, whenever you wanted to save in, in the file, when you go up to the this untitled kind of things name, and then you can type in the maybe chapter zero two. Uh, Python for data analysis like this, and then you can renaming it, 
and also go to the file and then you can click the you can actually there is a control s is the kind of a shortcut key but you can also click the save and checkpoint that means this one actually saving the all of the all of the code including the your outcome and markdown uh, languages as a one single file and then when you go to the in here you can see this i python mv gonna be creating just a second ago i just creating and then saving it and also when you see about the this green one uh green screen green green book that actually means that uh, it is uh, still active. That file is uh, still active, okay? So how you can go out of the Jupyter Notebook, you can actually click, go to the file, and then you can click the close and hold. And then that uh, that window is gonna be closed, and, and then you will see the, it uh, it, it is uh, turns the gray, which means the, that file does not, act, uh, is not active any longer. Okay, that's the how you can use the Python notebook. It's a very simple function. Okay. All right. So, and then now let's talk about the some of the some of the other functions to the to uh that is very that are the very useful. So one thing that I also wanted to check out is the tab completion. That means actually you can, whenever you, what the, what the tag completion means is uh, whenever you click, you, for example, you can actually creating the, these two variable and then uh, whenever you type the an and then, uh, and then a uh, type, uh, type tag key, uh, Jupyter Notebook automatically listing about the, all of the data or all of the variable that you are creating inside the code. This is what is called the tag completion. So that means it allows you to the automatically finding about the what kind of things you are looking for inside the code. So let's try that out uh, in the in the in the Jupyter notebook. Okay. In here, this is our code, right? So I will say about the AN apple equal maybe 10. And then an example equal maybe fifteen, and then what tag completion means is when you type the an, and then a uh, and then a press tag key, you will see that there is actually set of the functions that actually start with the an, the word an. Then you can easily find easily find about the what kind of a variable or what kind of functions you are looking for. Okay, maybe an example is the 10 and then an tab and example is a 15 like this. Okay, that's the what the auto completion is, is about. Yeah, All right. Then also, also another thing that we can do here is maybe what this one actually do is kind of like a, when we have uh, some of the variable, it actually automatically kind of uh, give you the what kind of uh, attributes you can do by using the that object, what is called that object. So in this case, when you click B and, and comma and tab, and then uh, these are the, what is called all of the, all of the function or method we can use when uh, by using the this b as an object so what does this means is that i will say about the, okay b or when i say about the b equal maybe three three four two five and then when you try to do b come uh, b period and tab you will see that there is a list of the functions about the about the append, clear, copy, count, extend, index, whatever. Okay. So maybe, for example, if I wanted to use the append and then clicks and then parentheses and then a six. And then when you do the B 
That means six is the appended added to the that vector. So that the append is a kind of a function uh, functions that can be implemented by using the that b as an object. Okay, that's the how it works. Okay, let's see the another example. Like uh, okay, maybe ten, thirty eight, maybe two, maybe three, five, seven, maybe twenty eight. 25 uh, 35 maybe 103 maybe 84 84 maybe 79 in this case and then what I wanted to do is I wanted to sort this number so when you click C and then when you tap you will see the there is a function called sort right? Uh, and then when you click, when you say about the C, or uh, not the C, like, uh, uh, I think that this, this, yeah. And then, and then when you try to type C, you will see that it is automatically sorting out, right? Because uh, this kind of a method or function is uh, attached to the that object, and then uh, that uh, that kind of a method or function can be executed whenever you uh, call, uh, call out uh, this kind of a variable C when you're using the C. So that's the what you can do when you try to do the variable C, uh, C as a kind of a database, okay? Do you have any questions so far? That's the what the, what the tab function is the good about. Okay. Whenever you have a have a, some of the good uh good data uh vector data kind of a variable, uh Python automatically attached to the possible method you can do by using the these kind of uh, objects. Mm -hmm. It's uh, also the same thing for the modules. Like uh, when you try to importing the date line packages, and then whenever you Call the deadline packages and and come and period and tab, you will see that there is a kind of a command. It can run under the that date time packages. Okay, that's the how the way you can use about the Python uh, method or function because the Python is what is called the objective oriented languages. So everything actually runs based on the objects. And then every object has their own attributes or own method or own functions attached to the, those each objects, depending on the, their feature or their types of their type. Okay, that's the what this one is about. Okay, and then uh, introspection. Uh, introspection is a kind of like a, when you try to using the question mark. Question mark is a kind of a give you the more like a general information about the objects. So what does that mean is in the our our code, when you try to see, click C and the question mark and type shift enter, at the bottom you will see the, what kind of, a, what kind of a information C actually have. So data type is the list of function and then uh, these are the data. And then a length is 11. So what does that mean? So what, it has 11 elements inside the list. And then a between the mutable sequence, etc. It's a more like a documentation stream related to the that C variable. That's the how you can introspect about the your functions. Okay. And then in here, you can also see about the some of the reporting about the object in inspection. And then uh, at the bottom of the code is the what is about the uh, define, define your own function. Uh, I'm not gonna cover this one today because uh, we will have a time to cover this one later because the uh, DEF is a kind of a function that allows us to the create create our own function, okay? 
It is also the same thing in R. In R, we actually have a function called uh, maybe maybe when we have a when we have a add num and then we can actually say about the function right a and b and then parenthesis and c go a plus b and then return and c like this it's the same so define function is a kind of a kind in R is a kind of a, a command a command call function. So in the Python, define actually allows us to the customize uh, creating the customized functions. So I'm not gonna cover this one today because it's a pretty same same structure when we using the function in R, but we will try to have a time to. Uh, look at the, this function much deeper in the later chapter, okay? And then you just uh, just uh, see how this one looks like and then indentation and then a return A plus B. And then decide you can actually create in the documentations look like, okay? And then also also you can have a, maybe try to do the NumPy as an MP and then an MP and then you can like uh, click the row like this and then a question mark that actually give you about the set of the function that include the word called load in here. So as you can see here, maybe when you try to import the numpy as an MP, oh, oh, as MP, and then you can click the MP and load and question and then you will see at the bottom there is a list of the functions that include the, the term load right that's the how you can finding the functions maybe that might be also kind of a useful function you can do all right and then the next one is the python language basics about the some of the indentations, not the braces. Cause in R, we can, when you try to converting this one in R, maybe we can say about the four equal X in one, sometimes maybe dimensions and something one and, and bracket like this. And then a code block gonna be in here as a for loop. And then we actually using the these braces in R, right? But in in Python, we actually in Python using the this colon. Whenever you say about the colon and then hit the enter, in the Jupyter notebook, it auto automatically indented uh coding block gonna be created like this. So it is all about the indentation, like a tab, tab space. here so all about the this kind of a grammar is a very very important that without the that tab space it it actually look like a separate code not the full block code uh, what not the block within the full loop okay so indentation is in in python tab indentation like a tab space like indentation is the extremely important in here is another code indentation in here, second tab under the if function. Like yeah, and, and I think it, it makes it yeah. easy to even read the code, you know? Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. also easy for you to understand the code yeah. compared yeah. to the maybe in R kind of things. R actually separate the, this kind of a code block as a braces, and then you can also set another braces inside the, inside the big braces. But this is a sometimes uh, inconvenient or uncomfortable to using it but in python we can actually uh, separate those kind of a code code block as an indent by using the indentation okay and then everything is object means is a uh, python is a object language languages excuse me and then whenever you're creating the sum of the objects 
possible method and function going to be automatically attached to to those functions related associate to the those functions are uh, those variable objects and then you can learn the those kind of uh, functions or method okay by using the period by using the period between the object and functions so how you can use the function is uh, you can say object name comes first and then period and then you will see you can type the method like this or maybe same thing comma and function not the comma like a period and functions like this okay object name and period period this period is very very important okay this one actually separate the object name and method and functions so that's the what is called the python is the object languages and also comments is the same as in a, as in an r so shop like a pound sign this one is a, how you can do the comment and then uh in the in the Jupyter notebook you can actually using the control uh uh control slash gonna be give you the automatically commenting and uncommenting this one okay using like a like a using the uh control cross slash for commenting okay comment and uncomment okay so that's the how how you can use and then another thing is the function and method calls so that's the what i actually talked about just before about the object name and some method or function going to be import can be imported and then there is also grammar or argument, what is called the argument related to the, this method. Okay. This is the how you can learn the command in, 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 in Python. And then argument the passing is uh, this one is also a very important concept about the when you creating the A like this. And then uh, you can say about the B equal A, and then a B actually shows you about the A, same as the A. But the thing is, when you try to appending the four into the A, and then when you click the B, four is automatically adding to the B. Why did things happen? Because this thing is very different about the, in our kind of a language environment, because when we try to do the this one, like a B equal A, this means actually B is referred by A, not, not the copy. When we say about the copy, copy the object, that means A and B is the totally different. But when, as you can see here, if you can just uh, referring the referring and binding the this kind of a uh, object, that does not mean the copy. It just kind of a uh, B gonna be referring the A, the property of the A, elements of the A as a list. Okay. And then whenever A is update, updated, B is also updated. Okay, this is a, what is called, it is kind of a mute, mute, uh, mutable kind of a features. That is because of the A and B is the mutable. Okay, because uh, uh, they are actually associated together. So whenever either of them is update, updated, the other, the other one is going to be updated because they are actually referring to one another, okay?
And then the next one is a kind of a dynamic references and then a strong types about it's about the typing about the classes, like a like an integer or string functions. So as you can as you can see here, uh like uh, like here. Actually, the first one is the string, and then the second one is the integer. So that means this plus calculation does not work well for the string and then the integer, which is the common, which is the makes sense. And then the same thing for the this one, like a 4.5 and 2. Okay. And then and then we can also try to check about the what is the object type or attribute like this. And then also, also we can also have uh, attributes and then a method related to the, these kind of functions. Like uh, whenever we click or uh, when we type the A period and then a press tab, set of the list of the attributes related to the distinct types and also method that we can do using the these string type functions, we can do those things in the in the uh, as a kind of a functions, okay? Like uh, these, all of the these kind of things can be done, and then yeah, and then you can also access by the these kind of a get uh, attribute functions. This is the get attribute function is the function kind of a name for the this kind of a uh, give you the sum of the how you can using the this kind of a function or related function for that. And then the dot typing is about the whenever you have a defined or for loop kind of function and then hit the enter, all of the these kind of things is the kind of a, what is called the dot functions. This one actually uh, actually comes in when you actually using the IPython IPython interpreter or maybe just kind of a very basic Python interpreter, uh, Python uh, editor console. When you're using these things, you will see this kind of a prompt. But the thing is in the Jupyter notebook, it does not have uh, this kind of function, this kind of a prompt gonna be show up because it actually automatically indented to the inside of that code block, okay? So, that's the kind of kind of thing. So, and also some binary operator, maybe as you can see here, like uh, this one is a power, and then this one is actually remainder, which means ten back uh, two slashes and three is actually one, because one is the remainder of the division, ten divided by three, right? So that's the how it works. And then A and B is the uh, uh, is the A and B and then A or B, and then uh, this one is uh, also boolean kind of function. This is uh, not the power, okay? You have to make sure about the, these two are uh, not confused. And then uh, equal, not equal, and then uh, everything is to uh, look like the same in R, right? And then mutable and immutable. Well, that's the what I'm talking about because um, list is a kind of a mutable kind of objects. That means it can be it can be updated and changing and replace it every time whenever you manipulating it. But when you say about the immutable, actually, in you, what is the typical example about the immutable object is what is called the tuple, tuple type of the data set. We will cover this kind of a data set later, but tuple, in case of the tuple type of the data set in Python, you cannot, it is an immutable object. So which means you cannot changing and replacing the elements inside of this tuple. Okay. So as you can see here, the tuple function. Tuple actually has a uh, this kind of a parenthesis, uh uh this kind of a print uh parenthesis sign and then uh, whenever you try to updating the this one there is an error sign because tuple tuple is is 
uh, immutable. Immutable objects. Okay. And then also scalar type, numeric type, and then uh, think all we can the, these things. Uh, yeah. Complete the, chap the chapter or? Yeah. I think that these are the, uh, I think that this is all. So, oh, okay. yeah. And, and type casting and non value. Non is the kind of a no value for the non. And then a dates and times. It is also kind of a very, very similar about the else if, else if and then the for and while loop is also the same. Okay. Like why is the conditions in here and then give you this and then a break and pass. Pass and break is a kind of a passing. It is also the same function in R. It's the same. And the range is a kind of a range function. So when you say about the ranges, it, it when you say about the 10, it's about the not the not including the 10. It starts from the zero to and then nine. Okay, and then these are the all 10 elements. That, that just kind of make sure of this. And then you can also say about the uh, first start and end and the interval, like a two is the interval, like a zero, two, four, six. Yeah, and then the minus one is also the same thing, like a backward, okay? It is also the function called the sequential function in R. Okay. So, but the like the, as you, yeah, yeah, it's a very similar but slightly different about the using the function. But you will easily understand about the rest of the this part whenever you are reading this one and then typing that one, because a boolean and every every type of the data type is also the quite similar. In yeah. when you're looking at the, this one, okay. Any questions so far? Anything? No, I think it's good. It's 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 clear. Yeah. Huh? Uh, I mean it's good. It's 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 clear. Okay. Yeah. Cause uh, uh, some part is a uh, very similar in R. Uh, to R with R, but some is a little bit different. Like a tuple or list tuple is a quite unique characteristic of the Python, and also indentation is also unique. But other than that, most of the part is the very uh, uh, almost the same. And also how you can call the method or function to the object, to run using the object. That is a very, very unique part of the Python. And that is a very, very different from the R. You have to keep in mind about the keep practicing about the, how you can call the function in Python, okay? Cause uh, in R we just uh, typing the that function name and then uh, we can we can just uh, typing the argument related to the that function right, but mm -hmm. in in Python we we actually call the object first, and then period, and then you, we actually call the method in the in the next to the that period, okay, that's the that's the main difference. You have to get used to the, this kind of a grammatical kind of a coding technique. Cause uh, this one is because of the Python actually more like a object oriented languages. So that means everything object actually comes the first and then a method comes the next. Okay. Menu, so that what does that mean is uh, using the that object C learn the method. That's the kind of kind of what does that mean? Okay, yeah. that is a very unique feature of the Python. So you have to keep in mind in the, the, that part. In the chapter two, that part is the, one of the key components of the that chapter. So you have to get used to it when you try to learn the data analysis in Python. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so thank you very much. And then I think that uh maybe next week, you're gonna do the chapter three, right? Yeah. Okay, so I will, so then I will see you maybe